Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you step by step how to create a beautiful column colliding hero section on scroll with Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is to create a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here and click on add new. So we're going to give this page a name and I'm just going to call this design and you click on use Divi Builder. So for this, I'm going to build everything from scratch. So I'm going to click here on start building. And the very first thing we're going to do is to add a background color for this section. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon to go into my section settings, click on background, and then I'm going to click on this plus button and add my background color. Next, I'm going to come over here to design, then click on spacing because here we need to remove the padding both on the top and the bottom. And also, I forgot to mention that if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right. So now that we've added our padding, I'm going to save this and then it's time now to add our columns. So I'm going to click here on this plus button. And uh, here we're going to add two equal columns. Now, before we add any modules, I'm just going to close this and go into our row settings. Here we need to go into design, sizing. And the first thing we need to do is to activate use custom gutter width. And uh, then we need to set the gutter width to one. Now, the gutter width here is the space between the two columns. So we want to make sure that there's no spaces between the two. And this is why we set this to one. Next, we're going to uh, make sure our width here is set to 100%. And then we also want to set our maximum width here to 100% as well. This ensures that our design is edge to edge. And before I forget, you also need to uh, make sure equalize column heights here is also set to yes. All right. So now that we have done that, next we need to remove the padding on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to come over here, add zero, activate my chain here so I can add the same value both to the top and the bottom. Next, we want to come over here to advanced. And here we need to go to visibility and set our horizontal overflow to hidden. And we also need to do the same on the vertical overflow. All right, so now that we have those two all set, we also need to go into the column one settings. So here we're going to go back to content and go into column one. So to go into column one settings, we just need to make sure that we click on this gear icon here on the column. And now this takes us into our column settings. Next, we're going to come over here to design, click on spacing, and we need to add a padding of 15 VW to the top. And then on the bottom, it needs to be 10 VW. Now on the left and the right, we also need to add some padding. So here we're going to set this to 5 VW and it's going to be the exact same value on the right as well. So I'm just going to activate my chain. So now that we have that all set, we need to come over here to position. And then on the Z index here, we need to set this to 12. Now we need to go and uh, make some customizations to column two. So I'm going to click here on this back icon and click here on this gear icon for column two. And then what I'm going to do here is to go straight to the background. So here we need to add an image. So I'm going to click on the third tab, click on this plus button, and uh, we're going to add an image, which is already in my media library. So let's just take a look at the size of this image. So here you can see I'm using 1183 by 1600. So you can use similar dimensions, but it doesn't have to be this very same image. All right. So now that I have this all set, make sure the background image uh, size is set to cover. And then over here, it's set to center. But the thing is, you want to make sure it's set to no repeat. And then finally, the blend mode needs to be set to normal. So pretty much I'm happy with all my settings for my columns. So I'm going to click on save, save one more time. And then over here now, we're going to add a text module. So I'm going to click here on add new module and search for my text module and select it. So here we can add whatever text we want. But you know what? To keep things simple, I'm just going to, in fact, you know what? We need to be in the visual editor here just to make things easier. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to delete all the text that I have here. And we're just going to type in some text called freelance visual artist. Next, we want to highlight this text and set it to heading one. All right, so what we're going to do now is to customize this text by coming over here to design, heading text, making sure we are on heading one here. Let's change our font. And our font here is going to be called Shadows into Light. I'm going to search for it here. And here we go. So Shadows into Light, select that. Now we want to make sure that this is set to bold. And the color here needs to be black. 
So we're going to click here on this eyedropper tool and just drag this all the way down to black. Now it's time to set the size and we're going to set this to 6VW. Now, while we're here, we might as well go in and set our sizes for our tablet and phone. So I'm going to click here on this little icon, go into tablet. And in tablet mode, we want to set this to 11VW. And then in the phone mode, we want to set this to 13VW. Now, the reason why it's important to set all our sizes here in the, all these devices is just for consistency purposes. All right, so now that I have this all set, we are going to come over here to letter spacing and set this to minus two pixels. And uh, over here on the line height, we're going to set this to 1.2. Next, we're going to come over here to spacing. And uh, this is where we want to add a margin of 10 VW to the top. So pretty much that's all we need to do here. So um, now let's just go ahead and save. And then we also need to add another text module here. So I'm just going to click on this plus button and search for my uh, text module and select it. So in here, I'm just going to add my dummy text by just pasting it in place. And now it's time to go into the text settings. So I'm going to click here on text. So here we're going to change our font to Open Sans. So this is going to be a free font anyway. So I'm just going to search for it and select it. Okay, great. So next I'm going to come over here to my color and paste my color in here. And on the font weight, let's keep it simple. Let's have it as a regular font. And now it's time to add my text size, which is going to be 0.9 VW. And for our line height, I'm going to set this to 2.4. Right. So now that we've uh, set our text line height, we're going to come over here now to spacing and set our margins. So for our top margin, a top and bottom margin, we're going to set this to 4VW. So since we're going to add the same value here, I'm going to activate my chain so the value can be added both to the top and the bottom. So now that I have that all set, we're going to add a button to column one. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to save this. And then again, I'm going to hover over this area, click on this plus button and add my and search for my button and select it. So for this button here, let's start by adding our button title, which says learn more. So now it's time to stylize this button by coming over here to design button and make sure you activate use custom styles for button. Right. So now that we have this all set, let's start here now uh, by adding our button text size and we're going to set this to one VW for our button text color. This is going to be white. And for our button background color, this is going to be black. So I just want to make sure this is set to black. Now let's head over here to our button border width and make sure this is set to zero. And then the border radius, it needs to be set to 100 pixels. So moving on, we also need to set our button font. So this is going to be Open Sans. And I know we've used this before, so it's going to be here, easy to find. Now let's add a bit more space to our button here. So in fact, before I do that, I just want to click here and just make sure that it's small uh, letters. Right. So I'm going to scroll all the way down here until I find spacing. And what we're going to do here is going to uh, add a padding top and bottom of 1VW and left and right. We're going to set this to 3VW. So now it's nice and big. And then we're going to save. Now over here on the right, we also need to add a text module. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and search for my text module and select it. So now we need to add our text here. And this is the text of our freelancer here. And this is going to be Jane Doe. Now let's style out this text by coming over here to design text. And this text here is going to be consistent with our title there. So it's going to be shadows into light. Next, we need to add our text color. So I'm going to come over here to the eyedropper tool and just drag the slider down because the color we're going to add here is going to have some transparency. So now I'm going to paste the values between the brackets just like that. Now, as I mentioned before, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right. So the next thing now is to add my text size and we're going to set this to 9VW. And then over here for the letter spacing, I'm going to set this to minus three pixels. And for the line height, I'm going to set this to one. And then for the text alignment, we're just going to center everything. Now let's head over here to spacing. And here we need to add a top padding of 5VW. And the bottom padding is going to be massive. It's going to be 60VW. And then our left padding here is going to be 5VW. Right, so now that everything is all in place, I'm going to save this. 
And now it's time to add our scroll effects. So the scroll effects here firstly need to be added on uh, our section settings. So since I don't have access to my section settings here, there's a few ways we can do this. We can come over here and expand this and then come over here to our layers. So I'm going to click here on my layers uh, icon and then I can just go into my section settings by just clicking here and now I can just click on this. All right. So now that I have this all set, the next step now is to go to the advanced tab because this is where we get our scroll effect. I'm going to choose scroll effects here and the option I'm going to go with is scaling up and down. So I'm going to select that and then activate it. All right. So now that I've activated, the next step now is to uh, customize our positioning here. So first of all, we're going to drag here all the way to 100%. And then over here, we're going to drag this to 49%. And then the value we need here is 100%. And for our mid, it's going to be 70. And for our end, ending scale is going to be 70 as well. So pretty much that's all we need to do here. Let's save this. And now it's time to go into our rows. So we're going to come over here to our column settings, our row settings. And we're going to go into column one. And in column one, we need to go to the advanced scroll effects. And for, for this one here, we're going to go to horizontal motion, activate it. And we just need to move this over to about 65%. There we go. And then for our starting offset here, we're going to start off at zero. And then for our mint is going to be zero. And then our ending offset is going to be six. So now it's time to save. Now let's go into column two. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon to go into column two settings, advanced scroll effects. And this time I need to choose the scale up and down. I'm going to select it, activate it. So our starting scale here needs to be 10%. And then the midpoint is going to be 90. And then the ending is going to be 100. So pretty much that's all we need to do here on the scaling. Now on column two, we also need to add some horizontal motion. So I'm going to select the tab, activate it. So the starting offset here is going to be zero. The mid is going to be zero. And then the ending offset is going to be minus six. Right. So the next step now is to just move this to about 53. And then the view top is going to be 53 as well. Bring it all the way down here until I get to 53%. Now let's add a fading effect. So I'm going to click here on fade in, fade out, activate it. And uh, what we need to do here is to add our starting opacity to 100, the midpoint zero, and the ending opacity also needs to be zero. Now we need to just make sure this is set to 47. So I'm going to bring this down a little bit until I get to 47. And then our viewport bottom here also needs to be at 47%. So I'm going to keep dragging until I get to 47. Great. So pretty much that's all we need to do here. So let's save this and then uh, give it a try and see what this looks like. So I'm going to hit save changes and then I'm just going to publish the page and exit the visual builder. All right. So let's take a look and see if this is working now. So I'm going to scroll now. And you can see our animation here is working. There's a bit of a lag here because my computer has a lot of processes happening. But I can assure you that this is working correctly. There we go. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified when we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.